Welcome well, back. Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the deadly massacre in a nightclub in Istanbul on Sunday, which left 39 people dead and dozens more injured. A gunman stormed the club and opened fire on partygoers during New Year celebrations. 24 foreign nationals are said to have been among the victims. The attacker is still at large. The search operation is ongoing. Turkish media report eight other people have been arrested in connection with the attack. President Erdogan, of course, condemned the mass shooting, calling it an act of terrorism. Seng Bagchi, professor at the Middle East Technical University, says Turkey is now increasingly becoming a target for Islamic State. President, uh, Prime Minister, Interior Minister, they all uh, uh, said things that Turkey is going to fight uh, terrorism, but nobody was claiming uh, this uh, uh, assassination. And I think that Daesh now has uh, uh, taken the responsibility is indeed a question why they have expected so long, uh, we don't know, but the fact is Turkey has been and is uh, the target of Daesh terrorism. But also uh, Daesh is very well uh, organized in Turkey, uh, I must say. Uh, the Turkish state is uh, every day getting 10, 8 uh, Daesh suspects uh, under custody. And uh, in the last uh, five years, definitely, Daesh has been very active outside of the Turkish borders and inside of the Turkish borders. There are thousands of uh, Daesh sympathizers in, in this country. A nationwide ceasefire has been holding in war-torn Syria. The deal was brokered by Moscow and Ankara and approved by the UN Security Council last week. The agreement's providing relief to citizens who've been suffering from the war for five years now. They include millions of children whose lives have been forever changed by the conflict. RT correspondent Maria Fenoshina has just returned from her 10th visit to the country. She has been covering the conflict there since it began back in 2011. And she's put together a special report on the plight of Syrian children for us. Take a listen. We've been reporting live from the streets of the Syrian cities we traveled through during our 18-day trip. And wherever we went, we were always followed by many children. Kids are kids, even in Syria. After years of devastating war, with all the suffering, they remain curious, vivid, and energetic. It was really refreshing to be able to hear their innocent voices. They didn't have time to prepare their answers or think about their feelings. They were spontaneous, so natural, and so priceless. So many of them don't go to school because of the conflict, although they desperately want to. Instead, they have to go to work. Many of their parents are dead or injured, and they have to provide for their families. All the children take care of their younger sisters and brothers. Children work to earn money for bread, water, and gas. We met 13-year-old Mohammed in Aleppo. He can't read or write and spend just three days of his life at school. Now, he works 11 hours a day in a metal workshop, goes home and has dinner. Then he has a younger brother and sister to take care of. For six days of exhausting work, he earns just 2,000 Syrian pounds a week, $16 per month. We pay more for coffee. And this is everyday life for many Syrian children. But they still love their country. They don't want to leave and be a refugee somewhere else. These boys and girls know Aleppo, Homs, Berezor, Damascus as their home. 
Even though they have been through hell and back, moving to another country, another culture is not what they want. They want a need to rebuild their homes and return to some sort of normality in their homeland. They have nothing to do with the war that destroyed their lives, but they are full of energy and are ready for when peace returns.